Um, we'll call the meeting to order. This is the uh, February 24th um, Yellow Springs Village Council. It's a special um, budget meeting. Um, we're going to do a review of all of the funds, basically, um, at this one. Um, we'll be presented with capital for the first time. And we've got all of our staff here. Well, I'll let, I'll let Judy do that. Um, Wintrow. Yes. Askland. Yes. Sims. Yes. Housh. Yes. McQueen is out of town for this meeting. Also present are all supervisors and interim um, village manager, Kent Bristol. Okay. Um, I thought we would, um, unless council and council can input on this, um, that we would just do a review of what we've already talked about, start general fund, do special revenue funds, enterprise funds. I don't think those should take that long and then get to the capital. Um, Krista is here to talk about, um, Krista McGaw is here to talk about um, the green space fund and I know she has a time limit so we want to be able to get her out of here. Looks like all of our guys are here, all of our crew chiefs are here which is good so does that work for council? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so Melissa, um, would you just go through any changes that, uh, that have happened to any of the funds that we've already talked about? Okay. Um, one thing that I did do is I did update um, on each of the budgets and the various um, funds, any balances that we have as of December 31st, I used those figures. So with the general fund budget, the only major thing is just a notation out on the side that was associated with the police department. I had erroneously included the, the salary from the already approved 2013 officer. So the total wages and benefits for what the new positions that are proposed by the police department is a one, two one day a week dispatchers and then a full time officer. And that totals wages and benefits of $91,838.38 versus the $105,000 that was in wages that I had had out to the side in the notation on the general fund. And other than that, just notation, I mean, all those figures were still included in the wages and benefits. It was just that notation was just incorrect. So all the bottom line figures are all still accurate. So in terms of the general fund, that was the only update that was made. And can you, um, I don't know if you would know this or you, Melissa, um, we did budget in 2013 for two officers on at all times. We just didn't do it, right? Is that is that correct? No. I thought we had budgeted no. for it. No? Nope. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. No. I know that the 2013 budget for the police department was what I had it was uh, now I can't find the sheet I've got so many pieces of paper here um, there it is the 2013 budget for the police department was <coughs> one million three hundred eleven thousand seven hundred and thirty six do we have that budget in our packet the the um, not the not the 2013 budget, just oh, the okay. actual numbers, yeah. because I had taken out the um, the budgets after the the first go around when I was absent. What was that budget number again? The yeah. budget was one million three hundred eleven thousand seven hundred and thirty six. So it was higher than the actuals, but not too far off base with what's proposed in 2014. If you right. take into consideration the. $91,000 for the one full-time and two part-time wages and benefits. And that's why I thought with that budget, that's why I really did think that right. we had budgeted for two yeah. officers on. That much, yeah. But just to not and hire them. But we just didn't do it. Um, we just didn't get to the sta get the staffing done. But um, and, and what was the budget for uh, 14 again? I'm sorry. The budget for the proposed budget for 14, the bottom line is one million four hundred four thousand five hundred and seventy-two. Okay, so that didn't change. No, that didn't change. It was just the notation, the notation. out to the side. Oh, okay. I was I was using the wrong figures when I put that note okay. in because I I was confused about what was. And, and, and that notation again is one. We're on uh, two, two one full time four. officer and two one day uh, a week four. dispatchers, part time dispatchers. So that notation is, is supposed to be 105K? No, it's supposed to be 90 k No, it was, um, I think, well, 
it was actually 91,838 to be exact. Okay. So the bottom line figures are all still the same. It's mm -hmm. just the notation was inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, the bottom line figure includes that. Correct. The 91K. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank Correct. you. So that was <coughs> the only difference in the general fund budget, which was just a notation. So if anybody has any questions about general fund, I'd be willing to answer any of those at this point. Council questions? Just, these are just questions for Melissa. Well, or they could be for staff, you know, if, if, as long as we're talking about general fund. Um, I think the guys are here mostly to talk, the other guys, crews, are here mostly to talk about um, the capital, their capital requests. No, there is no capital. There is no for capital police. for police. So if right. you have questions for Tony about the general police budget, this would probably be a good time to. <clears throat> so, um, with the two new positions, would we be having two officers on duty at all times? Is that what what those two new new positions would do, or, yeah? Yes. I mean, we're could you come up to the? What we're trying to what we're trying to do is once we get the staffing, get those people into place, the staffing, then we'll look at scheduling, manipulate the schedule to where we're looking at. We're on ten hours right now. We're looking at twelve hour shifts. So we're going to look at those shifts to where it would best suit to have two officers on. And this is merely just for officer safety. Uh -huh. So that would be two officers on in kind of peak times or two officers on at all times? The way we're looking at it right now is going to be heavily on peak times. Um, okay. One officer, uh, and I'd rather, but on our really quiet times, uh, uh -huh. early mornings and stuff like that. So really we would have two officers on at all peak times. Okay, and that would be, I, not, I understand this might shift, but what would that be look like from 8 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock at night? Is that what? Probably till 4 in the morning. Till 4? Yeah. And so it would just be basically a small window in the small very window. early morning hours? Yeah, that's right. Tony, I had someone told me that was their understanding that the law requires the two officers respond to domestic violence calls is that it, it's not a law it's it's, it's practice um, okay on any kind of a um, high-risk calls like that domestics any kind of mm -hmm. robberies um, um, it's always within policy that's a two-man call okay could you describe what happens if there is a call and there's only one officer on what what's the process for if they feel they need backup or if they feel it's a call um, that they're not comfortable going on alone. Um, I'll take active domestic. If we have an active domestic in progress, uh, uh, they would dispatch the one officer. Normally, procedures would be that that officer would wait for backup, which would come either from uh, our number one would come from the county, uh, which a response time could be anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. It all depends on what their call call load is. Um, at that point, if the county was not able to respond, they would go to Fairborn Xenia and try to get us a unit as fast as possible, even state patrol. So those times are critical, especially if something is actively happening at that residence. Um, if there is, we have to go in by ourselves, and, and that's just not safe for us to, to, to do this. And how, how many Greene County officers are on at a time? Uh, they have a minimum staffing, and it's been a while since I've been there, but uh, at the point that I left, minimum staffing was at five. And that's, and that's just traveling around the county at all times? Yeah. And that's not including the contract Beaver Creek townships and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I would say at any point in time, they have six to seven officers on it at, at all times. Oh, do they? Okay. That's more than I thought. But that's what they're contracted um, townships to, plus supervisors. And we're typically, do we typically get to most of most Miami Township calls first? Do, we, do you go to Miami Township calls? If we request it, yes. Oh, so you, you, you're talking about fire calls or are you talking no, about the township? No, ju just if there's a police call in the township, do that, we? That is under the county. If the county is unable to respond or need or they need assistance, we would go out. And, and we have to be really careful with that, too, is that if we only have one unit on and the township needs right. a car, um, it all depends on what that call is, on whether we're going to leave our jurisdiction empty without a unit to go out and assist. So okay. it's one of those balancing you know acts on can we respond to help 
and leave the leave the village uh, unprotected. So, so there's so many variables when we have just one car in the village and somebody else needs help. Um, can we leave to help them and leave our own jurisdiction um, right. patrolled? And Tony, related to Karen's earlier question, do you remember the budget from 2013, the 1.3 million? Yes. Did that include the two officers? That included the one, but we asked for that late into the, the okay. 2013 year. Yes. Okay. okay. It wasn't at budget time. We had asked for that officer uh, probably three quarters of the way into 2013. Okay. Um, I'd I could say so if if the new position is really just 91k, and even if it were 105k, it's still a it's pretty it's a a fairly significant jump mm -hmm. even without the the new officers from uh, last year's um, actual budget of 91 nine dollars up to one million one hundred forty seven eight hundred and seventy two so um, could I, I'd just like a better sense for what that jump is about it's about a 10 percent increase is it primarily health and insurance you're referring, you're referring to actual from actual to <laughs> the proposed 2014 budget that's correct from see where I put it. And, so yeah, 2012 was 925 2013 is 915 and 20, 2014 even without the new officers would be one million one hundred and forty seven so. okay I've got it blown out here mm -hmm. okay wages in 2013 the actuals were four hundred and ninety five thousand mm -hmm. and in 2014 um, the projected budget is seven hundred and eleven thousand and then let's see part, part of there there's also something interesting that's happening too with the budget there's $25,000 um, that's designated for holidays. It's a one-time payout that happens in November. It had the checks hadn't been cut out of the holiday line. They were coming out of the wage line, so it was budgeted, but it was actually coming out of the wage line. So I it's a holiday. What's the holiday line? <coughs> there, officers are paid. They take all their holidays. So if we had a holiday Monday, they are not paid on that check. They have one lump sum that comes in. They, oh, they get okay. cash in lieu of Got time it. off. Okay, that's fine. And then um, part timers make up 164,000 of the proposed budget. Health insurance is 179,000. There is some of that that comes back in as revenue into the general fund, which is the employee's 15% portion. And then the rest of it is workers comp 25,000, um, 16,000 for uniforms, which is, is lower than what it was last year. Um, Medicare is almost 13,000 so that's that's how we get to that bottom line well I, I so I get that and that's helpful but why why is it where is the where are the major increases coming from are, are the two part-time uh, dispatches also in that figure yes the, the two part-time and the one full-time are in are all included in this yeah. the biggest jumps are in wages and health insurance but those are the biggest mm -hmm. costs with hiring anybody okay so is the 91k inclusive of all of that because it still doesn't really answer my question because it's it's still more of the jump is coming not from the hiring new people the 91k that you said in new positions more is actually coming from something else does that make sense between I guess I want to I want to be able to give you the best possible answer and I have this expanded out so Right. Well, it, it might be helpful for me to. I just. Uh, this is our biggest budget line, so that's yes. why I'm in, I'm asking questions, not yes. because I don't think there's it's reasonable for a budget to increase or anything. Mm -hmm. I just I really want to understand. So, I mean, this might be one where it might be helpful to have a little bit more detail. Okay, and I can I can provide that detail. I mean, I have it right here, and if you want to, would it help if make a copy? Judy yeah. made copies of that yeah, for all of us. I think that would be good. Yeah, this is and this actually gives some more history too, um, because after the staff meeting today, we had talked about giving a little bit more history just between ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to 2010 actuals, and then I even included for whatever it was worth, just for reference point. 
Sharon in this spreadsheet had projected out to 2017 so that's included in there but um, I didn't touch any of that um, okay so that's fine it, it is there though but yeah that's that's the whole police department budget is great out. thank you I think that's probably yeah I think that unless you feel easier. like there's something that would be helpful for us to know Tony no um, that's pretty much it um, mm -hmm. just what we're trying to accomplish and given that solid full-time um, um, base and we can better serve the community with with making sure that we have we have two cars here and in case those different circumstances that we just talked about occur which they are occurring more frequent um, uh, I think we can better serve the community so. now, what are the, is the role of the sergeants are they are they out at are they on active duty too or are they more inside they are active duty um, right now we are we are when I put out my annual report all those things that we listed that we are working on they are actively working on with me so uh, they are pulling like double duty they're outside running calls they're inside helping us with trying to get these goals uh, fulfilled for us for the for this year so they are uh, they're very busy right now but they are a part of this staff mm -hmm. I did just think of something that may have um, helped explain why the actuals to the 2014 budget may have been or the, even the 2013 budget to the actuals and then thus the 2014 budget if there were any vacancies that occurred within 2013 that could have made those costs go down in wages or benefits I'm not sure what happened in 2013 exactly but if there were any vacancies then that would have affected the actuals so that that could have played a part in it for what it's worth and I think there may have been yeah we did have some vacancies during the year yeah, right this is what we're this is what we're kind of dealing with we've had uh, we had two officers that ended up leaving which kind of backs us up so we still haven't caught up to the 13 approval because of the hiring process so uh, we're playing catch up right now Yeah, thank you. Are there any other questions on general fund? Well, it's, uh, yeah, I bet Judy will probably okay. be taking much longer. Um, can, I, can I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. Sure, please. Uh, just out of curiosity, I went back to the last budget I wrote for the village in 1994, <laughs> and it was about eight, it was a little over $8 million. And I said, okay, if I take that, and I, you can go online and get the time value of money. You know, if, if you paid $500 for something in 1955, how much would it cost today? So I said, okay, if I paid $8 million for a village budget in 1994, 20 years later, allowing for inflation, what would the same number be? And the answer was about $13 million. And that's about where we are. Now, what surprises me is the, we've got fewer employees and I think financially I don't feel we have as much slack as we did then somebody pointed out that in 1994 the college was still operational Antioch publishing was still going Vernay laboratory was still here uh, you know so we had quite a bit of a revenue stream that's disappeared in the interim so that may be part of the difference um, I'm guessing just in based on intuition and subjective views that uh, we're spending more on contractual services than we used to. Um, and what about overtime? <clears throat> I, 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 could, I couldn't answer that. I don't, my sense isn't that we're doing a lot. I mean, the last few weeks with the weather has certainly given, a, has been a hit. But, um, but as a general rule, I don't think it's a, it's a common problem. I, I can tell you that when I came here 35 years ago, it wasn't uncommon to have half a dozen power outages in a week and <laughs> we didn't have preventive maintenance and so that <laughs> <laughs> and that was that's one of the one of the things that we worked on for years was can we instead of waiting for problems to happen can we predict where they might happen and fix them so we replaced rotted cross arms and put insulators on transformers that were constantly being shorted out by squirrels and hmm. so on and you know tried to <coughs> we had we had sewers that would back up regularly well instead of calling somebody out on saturday to unplug a sewer why don't we go around every friday and preventively deal with those areas we know are going to be problems so we started doing that and our electric service is much more reliable now. oh yeah i remember <coughs> when i first moved here in 98 
uh, our fla everything would be flashing practically every day. It was like, yeah, reset the clock again. <laughs> it's much better, much more reliable now than it than it used to be. Right. Ken, I had a question for you. Yes. And I've been looking at the uh, contractual services. Is is it the fact that we were lean and 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 employees that were we seem to be contracting out. I think we do more of that. Yeah, that's my impression. Yeah. And is do we find that the benefits are better this way? Have we get have we have we looked at? I have not. Okay. I, I do know. Um, trying to think of the city. When I worked in the Pittsburgh area, one of the suburbs completely did away with their public works department. They had a foreman or two foremen, and everything was contracted out. And the idea was they were going to save money. And I can't tell you whether whether they ever concluded that, that was a good idea or not. I mean, so obviously the big jump is in is in wages, is in, and then what else? Oh, wages and health insurance. Yeah, which is she what she already said. It might be worth noting that the health insurance actuals are kind of a work in progress. Um, not all of the anthem bills were posted, and I know that I've been having Susie work on posting those anthem bills because it's an EFT, so it's an electronic transfer, and she has to go in and manually update those. So I had her working on that. So those actuals are probably okay. going to be a little bit higher because she's still posting to 2013. So you're saying, yeah, that the, so that the 106,000 is what probably too low, which considering the fact that we were 186 last year, probably mm -hmm. is okay. That's why I put that note out to the side so you can see what was budgeted, but what actually happened is still is still mm -hmm. being done and updated. And so I see. I, I see that you do have a you increase the travel and training budget, Tony. Is that obviously in anticipation of doing more with more officers and doing more? Doing more training. Um, that's, that covers our um, uh, what we're trying to do is annual training on our CPRs, our active shooter training. And then, and then this year, since we have two new uh, supervisors, they'll be going to supervisor leadership schools. So, so we're and, that coming up. and the training that that the crisis training, does everybody get that? Is that included? That is our, that is our goal to make sure that all these officers can receive that training. Okay. Now, it's not going to happen in this year, is it? Not everybody, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, uh, one of the pro it's only offered within reasonable distance of here, what, once or twice a year? Once a year. Once a year. Yeah, I mean, we can't, it's not practical to send somebody to Cleveland or mm -hmm. out of state to do that. But, uh, and again, because of us being so well, we're talking about possibly uh, Luciana might be able to do some of that training in house. Um, she's advanced trained um, instructor. She is not an instructor. Yet, okay. So, um, and, and I don't know if they even offer an instructor school um, for law enforcement, but, but that is something that we can look into. But she does have advanced training. And I will say that we are, uh, just like Sergeant Knapp, he is um, he's an instructor in radar and detection. And so we're, I'm looking at giving more of our officers instructor, sending them off to school to be instructors so we can mm -hmm. do more in-house training uh, mm -hmm. with their certificates. And offer trainings here at the, at the building for other departments also. Any other questions? Comments?
Well, um, then I see, was there anything, we'll get Krista up here next, was there anything else um, except the discussion on, on uh, the green space fund from the special revenue funds, any other changes to that? Um, no, there weren't any changes. Um, well, wait a minute, I think Mayor's Court is under special revenue. I decreased their expenditures to be more in line with their revenues, which after I talked to June, um, she was supportive of after we looked at her fund balances. So. Um, I've put her expenditures down to 2500 with the revenues expected to be 2900 That was the only change. Okay. But you all did inquire about um, the land, let's see, the capital expenditure in 2013 from the street fund. And I did look into that, and it was for the streetscape project. So okay. that was what that was for. So other than that, I didn't, I didn't update that at all, except for the mayor's court and then that clarification question. Okay. Well, you can sit down for a minute if you'd like. We'll ask Krista to come forward and talk um, briefly about the Green Space Fund and what Tecumseh Land Trust is doing. Hi. Hi. Good to see you guys. Um, um, it's, it's time for the budget again. Uh, thanks for, for letting me uh, get in here on my schedule tonight. I got a board meeting after this. So uh, kind, of a, kind of a big evening. Um, we, uh, I, I see that there's a little bit uh, less money in the Green Space Fund today than I was thinking about 246,000 as opposed to, I, I had put 249,000 in my notes. Did you guys get those in your package? It looks like I see a map. Yep. yep. Um, so what I basically do have done is kind of put together an overview of what we've done in the past um, with the Green Space Fund from Village of Yellow Springs. And um, I've got on the map also in green are the properties that we've been able to preserve uh, in Miami Township and surrounding area with other funds. So I think some of you will remember that we had um, a, a nice rotating fund with the township for many years that um, they were able to use estate tax monies that came back from the state to to replenish and so we did quite a few quite a few easements with that funding we also were able to use uh, clean Ohio open space in combination with farm and uh, ranch protection money from the federal government for the Boy Scout camp for example there uh, with a little frontage on 343 and then 370 and swimming pool road so um, we've done a lot to be able to kind of fill in those blanks on the old country common plan and Jacoby Greenbelt plan that have been kind of on the books pretty consistently uh, for the village and and the township has has really supported those goals in lots of ways too um, the most recent expenditures that were actually made were uh, on the um, similar farm and the the Fulton farm which used to be Lucy Fogg's home farm up there on uh, Fairfield Pike and um, we actually haven't expended any funding since then but um, a hundred thousand dollars was committed I believe it was last year I think that was mm -hmm. 2013 to go towards the Glen comprehensive easement and uh, I mean I think you'll notice there the bang for your buck is very good 2.6 million and just a hundred thousand dollars from the from the village so uh, we hope to complete that whole project April of this year so I expect that we will spend that down a hundred thousand dollars um, looking ahead um, we have got a very uh, promising uh, potential application on SNP Road across the road from Simler's there and going up to Fairfield Pike and so we uh, would anticipate that that would um, uh, be possible to do with someplace between 101 and 136 thousand uh, dollars of village money putting some of our 1% uh, for green space which we get from merchants who voluntarily participate in that program and then leveraging twice that local and match uh, total uh, from the federal government unfortunately with the new farm bill the you do not pull down as much federal fund as we have in the past. So when the council uh, passed a, um, 
piece of legislation in 2011 when we still had a state tax funding to put $50,000 a year up to a maximum of 250000 We thought, well, that's great. That leverages us a million dollars worth of funding because you could get $3 for every dollar you had locally from the Farm Bill farm and ranch protection money. Um, we can't now. Now it's it's two for one. So um, that's kind of too bad. Um, it was it was nice to be able to have that, you know, that kind of dramatic uh, match available. But um, the I you know I'm requesting that you do put fifty thousand dollars in. I know it's a tight budget. I really appreciate that. Uh, but I do hope that we're able to keep building that that program up just in order to be ready. Um, we continue to stay in touch with all the landowners that are in the green belt. Uh, we really have not seen village funds as a resource for anything other than that Jacoby Creek area through the western side of town. That's been traditionally the priority and I'm, I'm guessing that that's still the priority for the village. Uh, but uh, we're pleased that a new project has come along in that area and uh, we you know we try to stay in touch with the people in that in that zone so that hopefully we um, we hear as early as possible uh, if they are interested in um, making some kind of change in their family estate planning maybe in selling land uh, it's a lot better if we're able to put an easement on with an existing owner than to see the situation that we have with Whitehall Farm where a farm goes to auction in as many parcels as possible. And um, while it was exciting and it did succeed, uh, I really worked pretty hard to avoid that type of excitement day in and day out. So um, the thing we've really been doing consistently for many years now really is to try to work proactively with those landowners if we can. And, and could you just explain um, on the SNP road, the one that, that you're looking at for 2014, possibly. Oh, it's a, um, yeah. Is it across from the blue, uh -huh. the similar? And just, but just explain why, because in my view, I, I understand why, but I think for a lot of citizens, that right. seems looks far out. outside the green belt. And so could you explain why that is a priority project and why the village would be concerned about that property? Well, really, it's um, in order to be able to preserve more of that road frontage, which is pretty important. Um, you've got some headwater uh, streams that feed into the Jacoby on that side of the road that then go over across the similar farm. Um, you want to try to preserve both sides of the road, too, if you possibly can, because you're... Um, in a way, people really like to buy lots across the road mm -hmm. from a place that is already preserved because they kind of have a guaranteed view. So if you've got landowner interest in a block, you're better off to go ahead and kind of close up that block if you can. Okay. Would the township, have? are you requesting their participation? Uh, they don't really have any funds available for, for this as, at this point, and that hasn't been their priority area either. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly could talk to them, but um, as you can see, their priority has been more on the eastern side, mm -hmm. and um, the, um, they've participated in projects on Clifton Road, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, get, I guess I definitely get nervous when I see all of the other land that... Um, I think of all of the properties that are, you know, much closer into the green belt, and I think of us expending so much money so far out. And I understand exactly why, but you know, we're we just don't have that ease of the estate taxes anymore. So this is literally money that's going to be coming out of our general fund, and so. But the green belt didn't come that tight either, and so you may really want to re-examine that and see if you want to have a tighter boundary. I mean, I would suggest considering that because I, uh, we really didn't have in that green belt the uh, former pit stick land that Jim Clem bought. It, that wasn't really a part of the Jacoby green belt as proposed. So, you know, coming out Dayton Yellow Springs, I mean, we really aren't, those, those closest properties aren't included at this point. So we aren't really in touch with those people either. When, when Fred Swetland was alive, I talked to him several times about putting an easement on his property, and he was interested, but he didn't trust the village because he said, well, and he was, I mean, 
I don't think we didn't deserve his trust, but technically, theoretically, one consul can't bind its successors. And so one consul could say, yes, we'll take a conservation easement, and 20 years later, another consul could say, oh, we'll undo it, and, and might be able to do it. And that was always his reservation. And you weren't in existence when I was talking to him. <coughs> But, and that's why I see this as such a fruitful partnership, because you are much, you know, you're, you're much more insulated from the kinds of political pressures that might come to bear on the village. Um, but anyway, what is, is there any ongoing contact with people? Who, who owns that now? Well, actually, the Swetlands still do own, oh, they still own? Uh, some land. There's one parcel that they sold, um, and a house has been built there, but um, they still own that land. Uh, the Brezes are along that route. Um, there's, um, I would say, probably 12 or so landowners that are in that strip on the west side that we stay in touch with. Okay. Um, and you know, write letters, um, they're on our mailing list. Um, we um, we try to not be too pushy, you know, but we try to kind of keep possibilities in front of people. Usually we send an annual landowner mailing that's very specific about the types of funding that are available. And um, that is um, a kind of very low key way that sometimes we include a postcard in it, you know, and people are able to send that back. but. Uh, we also know a lot of the farmers. Um, we, um, one of the farmers on our land preservation committee actually farms most of that land on uh, Dayton Yellow Springs Road. And so that's just really nice because, you know, he certainly wants to have tenure, you know, farming that land. He's putting investments into it in terms of conservation practices. So um, for not having a commitment, I feel like we do kind of keep the door open. Okay, that, does the Arnovitz firm still own some of that valley? Sure do. Yep, yep. And we, we definitely have had some fruitful conversations or positive conversations, I should say, with Mr. Arnovitz in the past. Um, and he said, if we were to develop, we, w we would call you. And we would certainly try to figure out how to preserve the creek because he really does have a very important part of Jacoby Creek. Yeah crossing that property but um, I've, I've not heard from him lately last I talked to him is probably three or four years ago actually but it didn't seem that there were very good development opportunities at that time and, and this represents what you do just I'd like to look at this and, I'll, and see how it dovetails with Bryan State Park and the nature's Clifton Gorge and mm -hmm. uh, if, if there's some practical way to represent them with a crosshatch or something. Oh, sure, a yeah. More comprehensive. Yeah, picture. sure. We can get you one. Because that's pretty. Well, no, 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 I'm just yeah. suggesting future that would uh, I'd, I'd feel so much better. <laughs> so <it's laughs> any other questions for Krista? Nope. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Let's see, are we ready to move on to um, enterprise funds, see if there's any well, change, or do you want to um, talk about? I, well, I guess I would eventually like to talk about the streets. It, it, it didn't Jason create Yeah, this? we're going to talk about that. Um, capital. Oh. During the capital. Okay, so that includes the, the transfers in because this isn't that's not necessarily uh, the capital. The transfers in is just to offset the expenditures for that for that fund because they only bring in a minimal amount of revenue. Right. So the transfer is just to zero out just what it costs to operate on a daily basis without any special projects included in that. Okay, so we'll just yeah. talk about the, the streets yeah, I mean, later under what, capital. Yeah. Right. That's what I thought we would do is is have each of the okay. each of the guys talk when they when their right. thing came up in capital. I don't know that we really gave uh, people an opportunity to ask questions of either the people. Do we want um, to do that now? If there's anybody who has questions for either Krista or um, anybody questions? Okay. Tony. Yeah. Just I mean we. We have two big general tax sources, the income tax and the real estate tax, and that's mainly general fund, but we also, it also funds parks and streets. Mm -hmm. And so we bring in X amount of dollars and a piece of it gets peeled off and allocated to, and the street department does have some revenue of its own, they get gasoline tax and motor, you know, motor license, uh, vehicle license fees, but it's pretty small. 
So um, anything with the enterprise funds that changed from the last time? The only thing that changed, um, we got an updated workers' comp rate. I had called them and I'd gotten a rate, which was in the first round that you all had seen. And then they had sent out a mailing, um, or a, I forget what it, it was categorized as, but it came in the mail and it had a different rate on it, which was a little bit higher. So I did update that. So the workers' comp um, with the personnel lines is going to be a little bit different, but the only other change was with the water fund and had me go ahead and figure in an additional $12,000 in revenue for the water fund um, based upon his rate increase that he's proposing. So okay. that, those were the only changes in the enterprise funds. Are we in any kind of a group rating program for workers' comp to keep our rates down? Um, that I'm not 100% sure of. That would be a Ruth Ann question. We were, but we had some bad experiences okay. that disqualified us. Okay. And I think we're still struggling to get back in the group plan. Okay. Karen, I, I did have one question on the enterprise funds and looking at the electric funds. Mm -hmm. We we had a, uh, and I was looking at revenue, mm -hmm. we had that drop from 12 to 13, but in 14, we're, we're thinking that's going to, something I'm magic's going to happen there that it's <laughs> not going to drop. I mean, I'm assuming that since it was such a big drop that that would stay steady just because of some of the things that did happen in 13 were pretty significant with creative memories going out. Um, and then you've got Antioch that's building back up again. So the, the biggest in decrease that we've seen was within the top 50 users. There was a, almost a quarter of a million dollar difference between just within the top 50 users between um, 12 and 13. So. I'm thinking that that should level out. Okay. Um, however, it's it's really hard to tell what could happen. But with with Antioch continuing to build, and we had the big creative memories uh, withdrawal, um, I'm I'm thinking that that should stay steady. However, there they are. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen. Okay. But I mean, the top 50 users was where the biggest hit came from. So I I do know that, that was the source of the dip, or at least quite a bit of it. I mean, I think that when it comes to electric, there's, you know, hopefully now there will actually be new people in creative memory. So we may see creative memories actually pick up again. Um, the college, um, if they put in a half megawatt solar field, we're going to, during peak time, we're going to see some decline actually um, from the college. So I think with energy efficiency, I think that I think that we're not necessarily, unless we have a new business come in or we see some extreme growth in either residents or, um, or a business, I don't think we're going to see a huge increase in electric usage. I just think, no. I think we're going to be going down rather than up. I think that's true. And, and I mean, and I, I think that's a good thing as far as, you know, our goals and as far as our policies. Um, but that's, it, it actually, I like the idea that we actually have the ability to have some growth, that, that we've got the capacity to have the growth. But I, I don't think we can count on, if we stay steady as far as the, the size of the, com of, the, of the village right now, I don't see we're going to see a lot of growth in electric. So um, hopefully we won't see any more decline or anything significant. It's in the, and I also looked at expenditures. It, it just appears that from from 12 to 14, uh, unless we had a lot of stuff that was was bad, that's it. Yeah. Power costs were really down. Okay. Um, jo as far as the, I mean, I know one of the big expenditures in the electric fund is um, tree trimming. Is there essentially a certain amount? I mean, I know that we've we've done the past couple of years to catch up. I think we spent a lot of money. I mean, now I'm assuming we're on a more regular schedule. Is that true, Johnny? That's true. So, so it's going to be steady. We're not going to have these huge expenditures, ever, you know. And see, but the thing I was looking at, you know, that's almost a seven hundred thousand dollar drop in expenditures in two years. You know, that's a that's that's a that's a heck of a drop. I know, and pet, let's look at, um, let me look at power costs. Yeah, I mean, power is going, the cost of power is decreasing. 
Yeah, power costs in 12 were 2 million, 32,000, and in 13 they were 1.6 million. So there was a pretty big okay. drop in power cost. I've figured in 1,858,000 for 14, so slightly higher, but actually I'd had a conversation with Johnny today and I guess AMP did indicate that the power cost would be a little bit more, but we just we just found that out today. Okay. The the other thing that that um, I was concerned about with with our us being in the red this past couple of years is to be sure that we're I know that some of our contracts with AMP the 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 um, hydro contracts especially are higher we're paying more for those because it's more expensive and I want to make sure that our rates are covering the costs of all of our contracts adequately because um, like I said I, I I really don't have any idea why we're losing money in the electric you know why we're losing money it, it's one of those funds that I don't think we should be losing money in and so it tells me we're not charging enough and I haven't looked at all of the contracts so that's something that I could definitely Johnny and I can look at the contracts and then base that on what we've got coming in for consumer fees okay, okay. I'd, I'd have to take a look but typically when you set a, a rate for any utility, and most of our utility use is pretty inelastic, it's pretty consistent for water and sewer and electric, some variation. But anyway, you set, you set a, a rate and you bring in revenue at a certain level, and you set that level higher than your expenses. But over time, your expenses increase, and at some point, they cross the revenue line. But the intent is that you build up a reserve during that period of time when there's a gap between costs and income and when you cross the line you operate at a loss for two or three years until you draw your reserve down to a certain point then you set a new rate and start all over so it's like it's almost like a ratchet so it's it's entirely appropriate and I'd have to look at the long-term trends for our utilities but it's not unusual and it's not inappropriate to lose money uh, for a short for, yeah. period. For a short period. For week, yeah, right. You know, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it could be five years. Okay, so do we want to get to yeah, okay, um, yeah. hearing from the guys okay. specifically? Let's start with Jason in the streets. Oh, did you have a question? I, the sewer fund. We're definitely going to have to look at rates on that. Yeah, let's, right? let's, maybe we can do that when Joe gets up. Okay. okay. I'm just going to go down. This is in the special revenue, am I right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Special revenue. Okay. Are you using your notebook or are you we looking at the budget? It's, it's just for you guys' reference. Um, if you guys want to, to go with it, other than that, I'm going to up here for any questions you guys may have. The first four sheets of that notebook, I will say, is I've broken it down into two things. Uh, the one big, the first two sheets will be for uh, continuing the downtown streetscape, and that is just per sidewalks, tree boxes, and planting of trees only. Um, it has included um, the street lights, um, roughly about 22 to 24 more street lights will be needed. Uh, per Kelly's recommendation, and the last time we bought that many was right around ninety thousand. But that's going to be out of Johnny's budget. Um, the only thing that I haven't included in that is um, the materials that will be needed for running the new underground conduit to those new. And that again, that will be Johnny's come out of the electric, right? Yes. Well, and so will the street lights, though, too. The street yes. lights come out of the yes. electric yes. fund, yes. too. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other three pages that I put in there is uh, an area in where I think that the sidewalks are um, really in need of repair um, because we put the wrong caliper, or because there was the wrong caliper tree selected for that tree lawn, um, it is upheaving the sidewalks and doing some damage to our curbing as well. Um, this area is probably the hardest hit because it has the full four inches exposed. So that that is a real trip hazard. 
but again, we'll have to, you know, for that project to be successful, we'll have to remove those trees and plant the right caliber trees in there should we plant trees back in the tree lawn. Well, what if we just that remove the That tree lawn doesn't them? look big enough. No, it's not. It's just too small. I don't think you should have trees in that tree lawn. Yeah, that's what. Well, Maybe we can plant them in this yard, the sidewalk. Or, or do we need to side? Well, you need the sidewalk. You don't want to have fewer sidewalks than you have. Well, Mercer Court doesn't get a lot of foot traffic, does it? It's, it's, that's what I'm saying. You know, oh, I see. See, because if, 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 is that the one we looked at, Jason? Yes, sir. See, because, you know, the, the yeah, it's a residential. In, it's, it's a small residential turnaround. And yeah, it's a, it's a cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac. Yeah, and it's not a through street. And, so. You know, it's, it's to, to me, it didn't look like it was a, a walking route where people were, you know, it, it. I mean, just for the neighbors, I mean, probably nobody is going back in there. Probably nobody's walking back there. It's more the neighbors the neighbor coming out. See, and, and I'm just wondering, would the neighbors rather have the trees or sidewalk? So, I mean, what would you what would you do yeah. then? Just go and pull up all the sidewalk and, and grass it? And, and grass it, grass it well, out. If, how if much would that out. cost? Yeah. It would be sniffling <laughs> less than that. That's a lot less Yeah, because, I mean, yeah. we're, we're talking major when we get in there yeah. and try to dig those. Wow. So, I mean, those trees, the trees are, the, the picture doesn't give weight, give real Well, where is, I, I'm, I, I think you, you know have to get out of the right down by you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You turn to the left. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I'm like, I know I see this sign all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, 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 it just looks like such a beautiful area that to, to tear all those trees Take out. Take all the trees out. To, to put a sidewalk. Sidewalk that and, probably yeah, nobody and, uses. And, yeah. and we are saying, you know, for streets like, like President, I mean, I think that, that there has, there is this general feeling that for estate streets and that there are streets that just probably don't need sidewalks and that probably are better off without sidewalks without, and without, uh, this may be what I mean, I mean I will tell you that the sidewalk that I am probably most concerned about is the sidewalk around Mills Lawn yes I think it's it's really one of the I mean it has it has a couple of drops that are just about like this mm -hmm. and I think certainly traffic wise I mean it was one that I expected was going to be addressed with safe routes to school and it's not going well, to be is it one on limestone street you're adding one on limestone uh -huh. yes. but but just the existing walk that's already there especially I mean on both sides really both sides of walnut the church side and yeah. our I would <coughs> and the, only thing, Elm the only thing to keep in mind is is that this whole area that's every patch of sidewalk that needs to come up the area around Mills Lawn and, and on the south side or on the east side was would just be like a, a, a spot here and a spot there Right. I mean that could that could be easily done. It's not the whole. In fact, they might even be able to jack them up, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Rather than. And then less. some of the lips that you know are, are half an inch or less. You know, we can definitely grind those down. Grind those, yeah. yeah. That, that seemed to work better than I expected. Yeah, I actually not think that worked hazard. that worked pretty well. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. this one, I think, it, I would really like major, to prioritize yeah. just really fixing up around the no schools. Lot. I mean, kind of right from now. downtown going out and. Right. Where people are really walking. I mean, I, I, you know, Jerry, I think this is the, this idea of not of of potentially taking. taking side, it's a yeah. weird. I mean, but, but get, you're right, Mercer Court. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful place, and to me, with the the the, the, the sidewalks are just, bad. You know? If we could just send a note somehow to the people at Mercer Court and say, this is what we're thinking of doing. And then just you know, if anything, feedback. lift you know. Because you could just about lift the, sl the slabs up and truck them off as they are. Yeah. The only thing that I would say is that we have to pay particular uh, attention to is they're tearing up the, the, the curve, curves. Curves. Yeah. gutter yeah. as well. I yeah. mean, they yeah. are way too, I mean, yes. that one is literally right but on the It's curb. not all the way around. It's, it's, it's only in handful. places. Yes, yeah. in certain places. Yeah. And, and that, that's, it, right. yeah. it's probably less of a problem. Yeah, yeah the, I, the I definitely want to repair the gutters, but the, the yeah. side, I, I, I'd be inclined to, to want to talk to the residents and if, you know, if they're not opposed to having to fill in and you know, fix the gutter part. Mm -hmm. And just grass them over. I mean, I would think that they might be happy with yeah, that. I mean, I, 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 I say they're, they're going to lose a bunch of shade when mm -hmm. they start mm -hmm. taking those, mm -hmm. those trees out. 
Um, so if we can maybe just make sure. I don't know who would be the person probably can. Can yeah. I mean, could mm -hmm. you maybe yeah. just do a, a quick to, letter? Yeah. yeah. The streetscape was that that wasn't included in the budget. Was it these streetscape numbers that I'm seeing here? None of the none of the projects on this list are included in, in the, the budget, budget right. because they're considered more like capital. Is that what we're sort of thinking? Yeah. It was last year. These okay. are the optional extras. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, well, in the street budget, what uh, are we doing? Some resurfacing? Is that? Um, what, yeah, what is the plan for the paving? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, we had to um, submit something to Greene County um, February 14th um, after discussing with Mr. Bristol. Um, we've come up with a list. Um, da, 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 da. It will include eight streets uh, getting um, either milled and asphalted or strictly asphalted. And then we will do uh, what is called a Cape Seal on the north end of town, the Northwood Gardendale area. Mm -hmm. And basically what that whole thing will do is just bind everything together and make it a smoother surface uh, for the residents out there. It's a holding, holding action. The holding holding, action yes. for the... Until we can decide what to do right. about the utilities. Now, yes. Now where what? is that it, where is that included in the special is it in the or is it in the capital is it in where is it where's street paving paving is actually in contractual services in the budget there's hundred and seventy five thousand dollars is it in the special revenue fund? Yes, it's it's contractual street. service it's okay. 265 so it, it, it's 265 but it's contractual services so you're saying 175 of that is is, is just our paving contract okay but how are we are we doing a pretty good job of chick chipping away at that kind of getting the first blush of all the streets getting all the streets and getting getting them up to the point where it's not going to be quite as much of an expenditure every year yes ma'am um, basically what we've done since 2007 is um, I mean we've we've done a, a pretty good um, swing at this and um, each year we've been able to do a little bit more to where all we have to do is do a little bit of resurfacing are rejuvenating to bring those um, services back up to what what they are um, some of it is you know we primarily do a lot of crack ceiling but that's you know towards the edges you're going to get that in place mm -hmm. so um, but most of these streets um, you know have, have a lot of base failure um, most of these streets have a lot of utility cuts which we also have to factor you know mm -hmm. if you don't want to Put a whole bunch of money into a street what you're going to have to dig up because I, I think that's yeah. what we're looking at on the north end so um so so it's 175 of the 265 contractual services is the st street paving that's correct yes yes mm -hmm. um my husband will want to know is Spillan Road on this it is one. in there. It's oh, in there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so happy. And I won't have to hear about the rocks in our driveway. Um, uh, what is the rest of the contractual services? What is that mostly? There's thirteen thousand for maintenance of equipment, thirteen thousand five hundred for solid waste. Um, there's forty thousand for tree trimming. There's, um, let's see, and seven thousand for vehicle maintenance. So I mean, it's it's kind okay. of parted out, but the big one is mm -hmm. the tree trimming. Mm -hmm. And then, and that's she clarified to me because I asked about that. Right. That's trees that are adjacent to sidewalks and things. It, it's the electric trees are a different story. The yeah, line the trimming is a different. Interfere with plowing and yeah. yeah, everything. Above so that is a, it's it's in our right of way. Right. That, that we're trying to take care of. Yeah. Okay. Let, let, we're just, we're just let me throw out a complication. I was talking last week with a resident of Fair Acres and told that person that we were thinking about doing a Cape Seal simply to hold the streets until we could figure out how to pay for re completely redoing all the, the utilities and so on. And he said, I understand that the sewer line and the water lines are too, too shallow. But he said, uh, really, other than an occasional line break, 
there's no problem in terms of reliability of service and you know the primary function uh, so why not just forget about the utilities and repave the streets and be done with it so uh, we need to have a conversation with well, the people in Fair Acres. But huh? that all came, okay, the, what Kelly said is that the streets, because there was so much cutting in the streets right. that we were wasting money, that, that, you know, all every time the street is cut to repair a water or a sewer line, then we've got a break in the pavement, then we've got right. a patch, and that's compromises the qual that compromises the paving. That was the point of why do those you know it's not necessarily the function of the water and sewer system it's that we're basically throwing money away on the paving because it's going to keep getting cut and compromised to such a degree you know that's not a busy street i mean i no. it it's so it's it's not the busiest street in the world so it's probably not as much of a concern say if it were a xenia avenue or a dayton street or something um you know those are the kinds of things i don't yeah, we, I'm it not would really be helpful if somebody <laughs> could, could yeah, drill yeah. down in those numbers for us. So yeah. Who wasn't <laughs> economically interested in selling us uh, either one side of the <laughs> equation or the other. <laughs> um, are, you, are you done with the regular budget? Can we look at the I had one board? other question. Uh, on Spillane, you know, we got that swell on the, I guess it would be the west side, yeah. and it seemed like it's, it's grown over time. <laughs> you know, it was here and it, now is is that ours? Do we? What are you, what's he talking about? What are you drainage talking about? swell. The, the drainage right. swell mm -hmm. on Spillane. On the west see, side. See, one side is here, and then on the other side, you got the road, and then you got yeah. where the on drainage comes. On your side, deep swell. Yeah. On my and, side, and that, my side of the road. Yeah. And, and that has it's sinking over time. And maybe the road is rising. Don't, don't notice it, but you know, I've talked to folks that try to keep it cut and you know it's it's getting so I'm, and they were wondering is that the villages or is that yes the homeowners it, it is the villages. it's in the right-of-way yes yes because I, I know me and uh, Kelly looked at it when we were out there replacing the pole as to how deep it has uh, gotten in places so I was just wondering if that well actually on that section right there the sediment and everything is built up to where it's actually a lot higher it's higher than it yes, was it's okay. a lot higher than it was okay and we've actually had to remove some of that material okay um okay. we were going to to pipe that area yeah, that's what i thought I um, to. but at the same time the the telephone pole was moved out into the ditch too far to where we can't gotcha. okay. bend around there so we've just left it as is i mean it's, it's functioning Okay. Uh, we just go out there and, and remove a little okay. bit of material. Not really. It's functioning. Right. I was actually okay. very impressed. You know, okay. we had that late, that big rainstorm, rain. yeah. and my driveway filled up, and by then, you know, the snow melted, and it immediately it okay. went okay. right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't go into my house. Okay. We don't have a problem. You know, it could. Well, some people had if their driveway isn't right, it because the houses are lower than the street. Mm -hmm. You get water going right into your uh, your garage okay. in particular, but we've never had any problems. So, Jason, do we have the eight streets that you referred to? No, you don't have it in your current packet, but I will get you those. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. There are there are advantages to open swales. Yeah, well, yeah, they, I'm mm -hmm. just you know they had that question, then, so I told them I, when we got to that point. I also, Brian, I will get you a list of what we've done since 2007 so you guys can have a reference okay. point as well. That would okay. be great. And then I've got it broken down as far as how much we've spent during that year. Great. Okay. So. Right. Because this was a big part of the levy, was part of the promise of right. the levy was we're going we're gonna to really, really take care of streets because they were in pretty bad shape yeah. by yeah. 2007. Yeah. So the, on the capital, the 308000 for Safe Routes to School, it, that's not going to be expended until 2015, right? Yeah, I talked to the state today. I talked to Tommy Arnold at ODOT, mm -hmm. and he said there's absolutely no way it can happen this year. Okay, so, and so said, we can... And somebody said, well, if, if it doesn't get done this year, it's in danger. And he said, no, it's not. It's not going to go away. Okay. So, so we if, can... if, if we were managing the project and we were dragging our feet, and a year passed with no action, then there might be some threat to the money. But since ODOT has been contracted to do all this themselves, uh, the money is safe. And he said 2015 is possible. 
it's actually more likely it'll happen early in 16. Wow. So we can take we can take that. I mean, just as a bottom line, at least at this point, we can take that. Right. Um, did we did down we show the revenue from that? No, I didn't. I didn't have a chance to put that in there. Okay. So so, it, so the revenue should be placed in 2014. But the no. expenditure. No. No. In, no we're in not going to get it. Expenditure goes out before we get the check. Okay. It's a That's reimbursement. A reimbursement. Okay. So the yeah. expenditure should stay in. No, the expenditures won't be until next year. Okay. At the, er at the okay. earliest, yeah. And if we're talking about toward the end of 2015, yeah. we may not even get the money till 2016. But right. I, I would say keep it, for now, probably keep it both in expenditure and revenue in 2015. <coughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah and, that, and it's a wash, essentially. Yeah. That takes that number down to 626.5, um, which is still... That's good, yeah. Um, so the 180 for the sidewalk, that included um, the streetscape and Mercer Court? Yes. No, actually, sorry, going back. The 180000 was what it was going to do to cover us just for the sidewalks for the downtown streetscape. Mm -hmm. The extra um, fifty-seven grand uh, was going to be covered um, out of country contractual and or operating supplies because our um, operating supplies um, shoot I forget where that other one was coming from but anyways that's where that was coming okay from. yes so the so the 180 is essentially downtown streetscape yes okay and that is to finish both sides all the way to limestone um, some of the sidewalks that we've already done have the ADA compliant ramps that we won't need to take out I know Glen Street has them on both sides, mm -hmm. and then up at Limestone on both sides, we'll just cut right to there and, and patch in, so we won't have to remove those at all. And, and could you address, uh, you know, the, I don't want to go into a huge discussion of the streetscape again, but I mean, it, it is um, time frame and schedule and, you know, when all, everything would happen. Um, well, I, I would like to continue on the east side, uh, since that side, is already a quarter of the way done start at Dino's cafe and see how far we get during this year um, it's it's definitely a, a, a two-year or maybe three-year project um, to get all of the sidewalks all of the conduit all of the light posts up I mean we're, we're talking a, a, a good you know chunk of space here. so that 180 will be will maybe be at the minimum split between two years yes ma'am okay. yeah okay. yeah but I just wanted to throw everything in there to give you guys an idea of what would possibly Yeah, but that helps us, you know, that helps right. anything we can right. do to take yes. that number down. Yeah. Yeah. Would you talk a little bit about your equipment, mm -hmm. uh, the equipment that you're wanting to purchase? Mm -hmm. um, first off, I have a proposal for two D-Box spreaders for our street crew. Um, what those will enable us to do is... Um, is to mix uh, the chloride with the salt, enable the salt to work at a much um, colder temperature. Um, right now, it's, it's it ranges between 20 and 32, depending on shade, sun, what have you. Um, and this will enable us to do a little bit better job of snow and ice uh, at their, at that colder temperatures. Plus, it will enable us to save on the wear and tear from dumping salt into our steel beds um, the stainless steel bed that I'm proposing is that will go away if we get the new truck uh, the new eight-ton dump truck which I'm proposing um, we need that truck uh, it's either going to be this year or next year and probably one of our big dump trucks is, is going to fail us um, we've dumped a lot of money into replacing it in your packet I've, I've showed you um, the bed of that truck which is deteriorating oh, pretty rapidly um, and that that is a truck that we'll, we will try to replace um, but after going to stainless steel this year with our small dump truck I think that that is the way to go I think we should make a requirement for all of our dump trucks to have the stainless steel beds on it because we can basically take that bed off to our new truck Right. Um, it, it's just going to last you over time and you're not going to have the wear and tear 
Okay, so the stainless is corrosion proof? Salt it, doesn't? It is. Salt it doesn't is. Mother. Okay. It is. And everything seems to come up a lot, a lot cleaner. Um, you, you, I mean, we were running uh, cold patch today, and it's just sliding right out of the bed. It's, it's not gumping up. So. Do, the, does the least thing that we did with the vac truck, is that something we can consider? To, that spread it over a couple of years, right? As far as the cabin chassis, because it, it's a two, two, two system two. thing, yes. It's a cabin chassis which we, we buy, um, and that's like 73000 I believe, in your packet. Um, that is something we could spread out the next two years, maybe three. The, uh, the bed and plow package and everything else, it, we can't spread it out. That's a one lump sum deal, and that's 49,000, 49.5 was right about where that's at. And that's to hook up all your belts, hoses, mm -hmm. you know, put the stainless steel bed on, your spreader, your snow pile package, and your plow. That's, that's all that includes. When you talk about calcium chloride, are you talking about granular or liquid? Liquid. It so has a liquid storage tank. Oh, it's built in? Yes. Okay. And when the, the salt is going through the conveyor belt and it drops the chute, you'll get that spray uh -huh. and then it goes out onto the ground. Because yeah, I've seen systems where you fill the truck and back it under a spray head and dampen the whole load at once. But yeah. The only problem with that is that if you don't get on it right away, if you don't spray your salt right away, it clumps up. Yeah. And then you're knocking it out of the bed of the truck or what have you. And what kind of temperatures are we talking about with the mix? The mix, you, I mean, you're, you're basically going down into the teens. Um, you get a, a, a good sunny day, and I mean, we can throw down salt and it, it, it can melt right, right now. Hmm. Um, but for this year, it was, it was kind of tough um, to gauge. But, you know, most of our regular salt was working at like 25 degrees mm -hmm. just because, you know, there's an abundance of sun. Right. So. But we got a lot of shaded side streets. Yeah. Yes, we that's, do. And that's where the issue yes, really do. comes in. I, I know side streets, they just don't get any sun. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, but it, it would, would it behoove us to look in, you know, spreading the cost of the, the cab and chassis out over a couple of years versus a... Yeah. Yeah, I, I can definitely um, um, call and, and, and try to see what that payment will be and then submit it back to you guys. Um, the last thing that I have for street fund uh, is I'm proposing um, a, a new backhoe um, and what I'm proposing is uh, we have two backhoes now one is down one is in storage that it's probably gonna cost us more to fix than the machine is even worth um, what I'm proposing is um, to get um, a loader for our crew just because we deal in salt, the aggregate, and it helps us with the snow removal downtown. But the engine compartment is in the back. And that might not sound like a big deal, but we've spent over five grand replacing a, a, a radiator in the new backhoe because of salt. So if we can get all that moved to the back end of that, we won't have to worry about it. And plus, it's got a bigger bucket so we can load and get out on the streets a lot faster than what we've been doing. Is there any recouping of, of funds just from selling the old stuff at all, or is it just like scrap at this point? Well, we can definitely look into that. One thing that I have, have checked in with him is we can trade that old backhoe once we get it running mm -hmm. in on this new machine that I'm proposing, our used machine that I'm proposing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And this also is another expense that we can spread out just like the back truck <coughs> when we were moving snow here this last time had we if we were restricted to the two back holes we probably would be still out there moving <laughs> moving mm -hmm. snow yeah I mean, they're, they're they're good for picking up a little bit of dirt but for the volume of snow that that we had to move without the uh, the, the bucket that that we rented and so forth we didn't ever we didn't ever get and, and our stuff were probably jammed and broken down. Yeah. Because it's so hard. And stuff. With this new machine as well, it, it, it comes with a quick connect system to where you can push a button in the cab and it'll disconnect from that bucket and you can go over to a forks or whatever Change. and connect. 
and lift pipe for Johnny, what have you. I mean, so we'll get a lot of use None out of it. it. But I just think that we need something new because, you know, our old backhoe is just, she's on her last leg. Melissa, do we have our, um, our, the end of the year, so do we know what our, our um, funds, the, our fund balances are yet? Yeah, I had included They're those included. In, in all of those as of December They're 31st. Off, it's off to the side on each one. Yeah. I'm so she puts it down here. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're kind of small, but they're off in the notes. What and I did have them in the capital budget as well, like street fund um, at the very top. It has the fund balance there as well as in the special revenue fund budget area as well. So the two hundred and seventy-nine thousand that's in the special revenue funds. That's just for streets. That's just for streets. Correct. And um, where's that? Where's that built-up balance come from? Does it come from over? I mean, obviously, kind of over time, but I didn't do a whole lot of digging to see over time how much each year has been um, mm -hmm. contributing to that. So right. I, I didn't really dig into that very much, just for the sake of time. So right. So is that and is that that street special revenue funds that is not included in the that's not the general fund. That's not included in the general fund balance that you listed. No, no, the general fund balance is separate from the street fund. Okay. Okay. So, okay, this is what I'm confused about. So, in the in the special revenue fund, the street fund, we're already putting in three hundred ninety-three thousand. You're transferring in three hundred ninety-three thousand from the general fund. Mm -hmm. Is that has nothing to do with the two hundred seventy-nine thousand? Mm -hmm. Fund balance. No, that's so, not the reserves at all. so we're looking. I mean, with even with these numbers that we've kind of taken out, um, with what we've just talked about with Jason, we're at a minimum looking at about four hundred thousand in capital for the street fund. Yeah, but, but that's not including spreading some of those costs. No, that was including yeah. spreading it out. Yeah. That so I because I've been doing the math as we've been going along, yeah. so that does include spreading it out. Um, so where that would come out of the 279 mm -hmm. plus so then we'd obviously we'd take that down to zero and would, then we'd have to come up with another 130,000 mm -hmm. okay and that would just come out of the general fund mm -hmm. if we did everything on if the we list. Did right. Everything. Yeah. right yeah the big transfer is just operating cost it just supports operating okay. cost alone so any of these special projects dip into that uh, street fund balance at this point <laughs> I think that's well I I would like um, and I think we made it clear but I, I would love definitely like to know an estimate for doing sidewalks around Mills Lawn and um, you want the whole perimeter around Mills Lawn you want Elm Street to be included See what's being see what's included. Yeah, in I was going to say there are only school. two sides now. Right, Elm and and, and Walnut, Walnut have got right. sidewalks, and the other two sides right. do not. Right, right. but, but, but there's, there are walks on the other side on both those. So the south and the west have yeah. sidewalks on the opposite sides of the street. They're not on the Mills right. Lawn. Right, yeah, but but I think we also. I think actually, except for the places where the sidewalks are really bad, yeah. the yeah. sidewalks are actually relatively good. So it's right. going to be it's more really a matter of raising or replacing slabs, not yeah. you know that. Yeah. So that's uh, that's what I want to know. Is just the, the the existing sidewalks on Mills Lawn, what would it take to get them so they're they're safe and right. walkable? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm guessing it's pretty minor, Lori. Yeah, and yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Be, uh, see, I. I mean, I lived near there, and I walked my dogs down there, and now I'm having to use a walker, mm -hmm. and That's it's a little really bumpy, easy. but it's not yeah. that bad. Really? Yeah. 
Well, so you should be our you should be our tester of we when we need to <laughs> <laughs> send Ken Lord out running through all this. Well, I, I fixed the problem. I uh, I bought a baby. Okay. Just no, on, just on the Mills lawn, lawn side. Lawn 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 side. Yeah. I bought a baby jogger because it has bigger wheels that don't get yeah. trapped in them. Oh, that's pretty fun. Are you talking you take about the dogs? Runners? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, they're the not in it. They're yes. out in front, like a dog team. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so for the so for the for the next for next meeting for Monday night when we're going to be seeing the final budget, let's have Melissa, you know, take put the ODOT or the Safe Ross to School in into 2015 spread out the um, the downtown streetscape maybe talk to Jason about what he really thinks you know if, and I don't there isn't as much on I mean there's as much sidewalk on on Dayton Street or excuse me on the on the west side but um, but I guess what we're doing was we're actually putting a lot back that wasn't there there aren't that many trees but I think we're adding a lot of trees there yeah on the even if we could, I don't think you want to do both sides in the same right. year. Right. Yes. No. Yes. So, the so I mean, we may want to we may want to pull. 46. Yeah, we may want to stretch that out over you know two or three years. Okay. years. So, yes. so look at that, and then look at at what we can do with that equipment to with spread those payments out. Spread payments out. out. Sure. Spread the payments sure. Also, I just want to point out that you're getting curbing with the sidewalk for the downtown street. Right. We're not going to put. The, back to the existing curb now. We're taking out that curb okay. and putting in standard D curb mm -hmm. and, and continuing <coughs> it like we've done. Okay. Uh, um, mm -hmm. The credit union. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, let's see what's next. Um, oh, is there anything in Parks and Rec? Oh, gosh, we haven't yes. even gotten to that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Whoa. Well, I, a lot of these things are going to be Right. I, I'm in that, that bridge to nowhere. <laughs> well, the bridge would be lovely, but that yeah. may have to be a private fundraising yes. kind yeah. of initiative. Because, you know, the. It, it, can I ask a question on that now? Yes, sir. There is a way to get around Alice Pond, the bridge. On the back side. Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, if you're a nice walker, you can walk walk all the way around yeah. and not have to cross that. Right. Culvert. That, that yeah. culvert. And, it, and it, it had the animal not got in, the human wouldn't have had to go in. Is, was that a, the situation? There? But, at, <laughs> yes, it was. But at the same time, since we have done that, we've, you know, there was guardrail area there that had a sign that says, do not cross spillway. Uh, we have actually added another sign out there, and we put up the orange snow fencing for mm -hmm. to, to try to deter people to walk around. That snow fencing has been taken down, and it, it's still, they're going to cross there no matter what we seem to do. We put yeah. three bushes there to try to, you know, I know. Uh, prohibit Once them from walking. Decide, they want a path. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the easiest way to get to the other side, and that's the way they're mm -hmm. going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the bushes didn't have big enough thorns. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. Mm -hmm. it sure it didn't. But, but the meat order is a way. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, is there is there a plan B if we don't go with the bridge? That's totally up to you guys. Uh, I mean. Um, I mean, is there is anything more permanent you could do to keep people? I, the the bridge has to be there. The bridge has to be there just because the spillway has the to spillway. Be. Right. What it says each bridge where the two is. I mean, I think I know the one is right there where people. The one is right problem. there. Yes, and then the second one, um, I believe Mr. Bristol has talked to Lloyd Kennedy, who would like to see another bridge from Ellis Park into the Arboretum, so it would cross. There's a creek, a little creek there. along the west edge. In other words, you've got the pond here, but beyond the pond, there's a creek. Right. And the creek cuts through the village property, and there's a corner that's isolated. You can get at it by going down a farm lane on Whitehall Farm, but that's not really our property. Right. So, and and it is it is an arboretum, and people in town who are fans of Lloyd Kennedy would like to 
make it accessible. Uh, but and somebody volunteered to pay for it, but uh, I didn't tell him that the, what the price tag would be. He's he's not he's a little frail. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> And there isn't a there there isn't a cheaper alternative to the bridge. No, just because you have to uh, drill down to where you can find solid rock. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. We could have built something. I didn't feel comfortable uh, doing it, um, just because we have to drill down to find bedrock. You have to put the permanent uh, concrete anchors in. Um, typically, we we should have something that's you know ADA compliant. Um, so we have to look into all, all those as well. And there's nothing we can do to, at least just for now, to the surface of the existing one to make it safer? All we can do is just put up snow fencing and try to deter people from crossing this roadway. How about step, stepping stones? It's too deep. Oh, yeah, God. It's too no. um, the only thing that we could do is maybe around the top of it, and then you're a falling issue. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't We've got to make it safer, or not? <laughs> yeah. To go into the water. Yeah. Rope swing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, swing or, ro or a rope bridge. <laughs> yeah, swinging bridge like they used to have in the glass. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I mean, do we want to talk about any of these others? Library. Well, I mean, we're still, I mean, are there any, so are we taking, are we basically, or, or are we just going to talk more specifically about these next week? Are we going to I, I don't ask know. I, I guess I'd go on record as saying that, you know, the uh, community fundraiser or something to try to put that, that bridge in. Yeah, I mean, I would be I, willing to take that yeah, one out. I mean, yeah, I don't think Maybe outside or something. Would the the Army Corps of Engineers dredged Ellis Park one time? Do you think we could interest them in building a bridge? Possibly. Uh, I know um, when my predecessor here, uh, Dave, he got in contact with them, um, and they didn't want to dredge Ellis Park out again because it's too shallow. The bedrock is right there, um, but. The bridge, I can contact them and try to see if that's an option. <coughs> um, and then, what it, should we pick a number for? There's two things for the pool, total of twenty six thousand five hundred for um, shade, and also for furniture. We probably don't really need the pool furniture. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think I'd, I'd, I'd like to, like to get some, some shade, shade, some shade up there. Yeah, maybe it's that kind of, that's more of a health issue. Yeah, so maybe that could be phased or, you know. Okay. You've got, you guys got that in your packet. Okay. Right. Okay. So we'll look mm -hmm. at that. But um, skate park is important. Mm -hmm. What's the playground equipment here? Is that? Yes. It's okay. becoming increasingly harder for us to find replacements. Um, I know the slide has a big crack in it um, that all we're doing is being able to put um, caulk around it kids slide down they hit that cock and they're kind of stopping in their way so <laughs> and you, it's got a lot of graffiti in it and well it's, it's what really old I, I see a Verizon play park when that tower goes in <laughs> I see a Verizon park going in right next to it <laughs> I think there could be some funding there yeah well, Maybe, well, we should I mean they're gonna have they're, they're gonna have a lot of work to do back there yeah. so we really honestly it would be perhaps helpful because this is this is the kind of thing where citizens might be able to help us prioritize and maybe even do some looking for grants, fundraising. Citizens paid for that. That was a fundraise. That mm -hmm. that kids play area was all fundraised. Right. I think but, we probably installed it. But, but that yeah. I'm, what I'm saying is, I wonder if it would be helpful for us to convene a task force that would be kind of a citizens. Parks and Recs improvement to help us try to fund some of these things. I don't know. Part of what Brian was hoping to do with the Arts Commission was to expand it into Parks, Recs, and, Parks Art. and, Rec mm -hmm. and Arts. Yeah, and um, you know, we met a couple weeks ago, uh, and the commission does seem to be interested in, in helping with that work. And so maybe that would be a starting point to see if we need to expand that task force. 
I think that's a good idea. And, and if you could maybe just bring in these numbers and tell them that these are things that are things we'd really love to be able to do, but are right. we're not seeing it happening in our budget, and could they help us figure out how to make it happen in ways that don't tax our staff too much? That would be okay. wonderful. What are you seeing with the skate park, though? I do get concerned when there are safety issues. Um, is, th is there anything that can be done, stop gap, to help the skate park? The only thing that we've been able to do is rebuild some of our ramps um, with new plywood, new skate light, um, trying to keep that area a lot cleaner, um, free of broken bottles, uh, free of graffiti. However, um, it's kind of disheartening because when you put up something new, it seems like it gets destroyed even faster. Um, we've built a couple of skate um, boxes, and um, I know at least one of those has been lit on fire. Um, and then the new ramps that we've built, the landings, um, you, you have it in your packet. One, there's a hole that's been kicked in in the top of it. Um, so what this proposal is doing is basically taking out all those ramps and putting in either um, concrete or metal ramps in which it is harder um, to destroy and will get more useful life out of it. So that that surface is just that that almost like a Luan board or something. It's like a smooth masonite board. Yeah, it's, a, it's called skate light. Okay. But the skate light is like $130 a sheet. It's yeah. Rather it's what they like. Yes. But rather expensive. And that particular ramp was built for an indoor, and because it's gotten oh, outdoor right. and got wet and it's holding moisture and, and drying out, that some of the sheets of, of skate have, have rippled in. Well, that one, this really might be a good thing for the Arts Commission to especially look at then. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what yeah. to do I mean, this. This is not. There, there is a citizen committee, and they're the group or the successor of the group that helped raise money for the park in the first place. And, and they have money, but not very much. Yeah, and actually, uh, Matt is on the commission, um, so. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, well our next meeting is going to be uh, the March twelfth, and we will definitely focus on this, and we'll have something to at least talk about. After. And I would honestly say with this, with the playground, um, all joking aside about Verizon paying for it, I, I don't I wouldn't invest anything. I, I, I don't even know if we'll have room. I, I, yeah, tell so them, I would tell you know do, if do there is something do. unsafe for these kids, that might might be something we have to deal with if we have to take something take out or something or but, take it out. But I don't think we should invest in, in a playground right now until that tower is mm -hmm. built or we know what's gonna happen. Okay, library. I, oh, sorry. Just this point. When I came up with all these list of projects, that's just projects. I mean, it doesn't have to be done. It's just products I want to get on your guys' radar. Oh, absolutely. That, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but we've been talking about that. Yeah. But that these one we haven't all, been. But the skate yeah. park has always been always on our been radar. Yeah, right. And nothing you're proposing. I, I'm glad you do it because we want it to. We want to have a sense for what our inventory is like. And, Mm -hmm. and where, where you're seeing weak spots. Um, so I appreciate the, the work. So, the, I mean, we've got the 50000 then down annually for energy improvements, which I would like to... I don't know that we need to do... I, I feel like that can just be put into the library. I mean, that's what we're doing at the library. We, we're not saying that those energy improvements, all that we're saying is that that's for... Their energy improvements. Their energy improvements for village-owned property. Yeah. And, and, like and so, I yeah, agree. I mean, to me, it just yeah. should take off of that library total. And then there's the Cemetery Street. Well, there, there, there is the Southern Farm. Wait, is that? Oh, no, that's, yeah, that is okay. And, yeah, you know, know we, we are Southern Farm. The, the, you get, we got an estimate, nothing in the budget, but uh, we're, we're spending, you know, getting into millions now on equipment uh, right. that, that we have in, in we, we don't have space. We don't have space to put it in, plus our workers don't have 
they don't have a facility that, that they can use. They, they come off the job, you know, fixing a, a water meter or water break or whatever, you know, they can't, can't even go in there and try to shower off and, and, and change their clothes. And, and so, yeah, the, the, uh, it, it, it takes them probably half as much time to move stuff out mm -hmm. just to get the stuff, just to start the, the job. So, you know, uh, we, we've got to figure out how we can, can replace that, that, that facility. Mm -hmm. uh, because a, a lot of the, st the a lot of the equipment that we buy now are run by hydraulics, mm -hmm. and the sun messes with the, the hydraulics and messes with the lines and so forth. And, uh, you know, uh, I know we put it off for for quite a while, but uh, you know we're, we're just investing too much money. In so equipment. this five hundred thousand, where did that? Um Estimate come? Do we have that estimate for the for placing the outmoded buildings on Sutton Farms? That's the first I've I've seen that number. Yeah, I believe Mr. Brooks is working on that. I just I just oh that's well, just and there's a place marker right. right. Yeah, oh, but okay. but I think yeah. we need to to really you know if it takes a we need to get someone out there to look at that whole area and determine how best we can phasing, replacing, you know, getting buildings up and so forth. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of a mess out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got, you know, it, now you tell me, Jason, you know, but it, to me it would take someone coming out and, and, you know, Jason has some ideals, but kind of looking at the whole area and saying how can we best uh, do that. Yeah. I think that that space could be, um, Served a little bit better than what it's yeah. being used for right now. We're renting storage space on Fairfield, Fairfield Yellow Springs. What's stored there? Uh, the old backhoe is right now, and then I know Johnny has some stuff that that's out there, but that's mainly machinery and pieces of equipment that we don't need to be on hand as of right now. Okay. Um, but it is, you know, another storage facility. Is that, that the township building? Is it right the township? Yeah. Oh, it's Lewis. Lewis. Oh, it's Lewis. Lewis. Lewis is but it's, it's, it, those, those buildings aren't big enough to hold, you know, our equipment is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, and, uh, yeah what we really what need, we need, is need is basically a big steel. New pole barn. New pole, pole, pole barn is what steel we building. What yeah. starters. It's, it's I'd say it's more than a pole barn. It's probably like a steel. Well, I mean, we could, we could yeah. use well, two. That's what they are, yeah. pole barns. Yeah. Pole barn, yeah. yeah. Is there? I mean, that's the, that's the kind of area where I, you know, I wonder if there's the ability to do share to shared space. You know, does the township have? Do they have any issues with their storage? Do they need storage? I mean, is this the kind of area where we could do a joint project? Yeah, I believe I was talking to Dan Gokin. He works for the town, township, and uh, he was saying that he's quickly running out of space um, as well. Um, but there was never a discussion on, you know, would it be well, better served for I, I, we, Yeah, I was going to approach John and I don't see think we, we could probably build, well, we might be, I do think what we should budget for is to have somebody look at that and say, what's the cheapest way we can build the square footage that we need um, to at least get our, build, our, our stuff covered yeah. and put a, uh, kind of farm yeah. bathroom and shower facility because I think we can do it in phases couldn't yeah yeah mm -hmm. if I we mean, could just get a plan and, uh, that is, uh, farmers put this kind of thing in all the time a big pole building with a with a, a shop area that's that's heated and and has a shower or something in it um, that you can do that it doesn't have to be super Shangri-La right, it just right, needs to be right. functional yeah so I would think we could put something, I don't know what that would cost a budget, and we might have that person then talk to the people at the township, look at their facilities and see if there's any way we can do some joint work on this. I, I think we have plans. I don't, I don't know how recent they we are. Don't, I, yeah, I don't they're know not how super current. recent. Yeah, they're they're not current. From, they yeah. were from just before I came on council, I think about 2006 or seven. And, and I, don't, I think it was 
I don't think that was putting a new building. No, it was just it was I think it was just renovating the um, the shower. I think it was just re renovating, renovating the crew building. The crew it didn't building. have anything to do oh. with uh, right. equipment. Where storage. I think buildings yeah. and storage. The one that I did see was um, proposed by Bruce Rickenbach uh, back in the seventies, and that was that was the whole building, and that layout is everything that we need. Huh. It just didn't outline what the price was going to be. It had everything that we would need today. In one building? In one building. Wow. Yep. I mean, pull it out. I mean, you know, that could be something that, that you know, it is a metal out. building. Mm -hmm. That could be something that a metal building contractor could, it could be a design build. Sure. Um, oh, yeah, that instead of be a, something <coughs> fairly right. cheap. It wouldn't, doesn't have to, uh, yeah, the, 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 these the, kind of buildings are built all the time. Yeah, the and you even, could add, the they're pretty easy part. to add on to. Yeah. So yeah, I would say let's, um, I don't know what we budget for that, but if we could get the, get the plans and, and get that, make sure that's on the radar for the new person coming in. And if you find those plans and, and can have somebody look at them, get, can you keep that ball moving? I don't, I don't know how to put it in our budget, but. Is it something, you know, depending on whatever come out that we could add to, to the budget later? You know, well, we can always yeah. We can always do that. Yeah, because yeah. 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 you know, if, if we could get something done this year and at least get mm -hmm. some of our stuff under, under cover and then, you know, tear down and do the rest next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think we kept space on the one end to, to go toward the, the salt bins to uh, and then, then move back the other way. Right. Well, basically, what what we were going, we were, we were thinking, is moving all of the electric part of it to the rear, to where it's less accessible, less visual, and then putting the new building there because you've already got the parking lot right there, and we can extend that pad and just right. run it onto right. the parking lot and just put it right there. Mm -hmm. That way, you're not taking away from the two buildings that are that are currently there now. Right. And that may make sense. Um, so then, moving on to the library, it looks like what what is being being budgeted for this year is the roof. Um, I know that I know that one of the one of the things that was proposed with the library is because almost all of the investment we were making is in utility. Is it is is an energy efficiency? Mm -hmm. So. They should be realizing lower, um, lower utility bills, and there was a proposal to offset to to charge them. Right now, I assume they're not paying any rent; that they're maybe a dollar or something. Was to actually start charging a lease payment annually in order to offset. That would be the difference between what they're saving. Mm -hmm in utility bills and and what we're investing so that we're at least seeing some type of investment back that that it's not and and so i would like to um i would like to look at that again i mean it was proposed and it was never acted upon and i don't think it was necessarily rejected by the library folks either um because it's you know i mean we're going to end up with a hundred and with a half million dollar investment in that building aren't we Mm -hmm. if, or more after everything said and done. Yeah. Well, because we've already paid what did we spend this year we, we we invested no we didn't do anything this was last year wasn't it that we yeah, it was last year la last year okay in 12 <laughs> i think was the last yeah. mm -hmm. and, and then kind of looking at moving the the rest of the improvements to 15. Sure. now the only thing that i would say that needs to be addressed and needs to be taken care of out of this list if we don't do everything the thing that we need to do is the roof right yeah that's yeah. Yeah. warranties just because of, you know the roof is is old it's flat it drains in tip interiorly instead of externally um, plus if we run the new um, a storm line down limestone we can easily tap into that line that's coming up to feed the library and we, we would get that and we would have a, a leak and, and not a problem up there. I'm a big advocate for starting outside and then moving inside instead of the other way because all that, 
the new uh, toilet system, the new windows, the new lights and everything, if you still have a leak, that's all for nothing. But so the, the folks do, there, there is that concern that we, we put a new roof in and then put holes in it to, to remodel the toilets. So yeah. You got that, you know. So yeah. You, you got people on both sides of the. But that's you know saying. Yeah. But that far outweighs, you know, because because basically right now what you're doing is you're wasting your money for the HVA system. There's a leak that came down. It dripped on the HVA system and it ran probably about 20 feet. Now that 20 feet is going to see some rust to here before long, and then you're you're deteriorating that that duct work. Right. Well, let's. Um so you're saying the 150 for the roof and what was the other line item? That was it. That's, That's all it? you had yes. for the library this year. That, that should hopefully be done this year if we proceed forward with this. And there's how much there's how much is in that fund? 319 facilities improvement fund. How much? Three hundred nineteen thousand. Oh. We don't have to worry about the the dry well drainage piece. No, because we're going to be able to pipe that because of that other system that's coming up the alley. Okay. We can pipe that, run it down alongside the parking lot, and tie right in, and be good to go. So the three nineteen figure that you had is that. What all comes out of that? Is there anything in like the parks and rec? Oh, there, there's 321 in the parks and rec yes. budget yeah, fund balance. Okay. Oh, that isn't as bad as I. Oh, oh, I right. Well, we should probably spend some of that fund balance for mm -hmm. for some of this stuff. I I'm sorry. I, in, when I was looking at all of this, I was thinking this was all having to come out of the general fund. I'm like, where is it going to come from? Mm -hmm. right. So. I feel I feel better about that I honestly I don't I think we need to invest in um, I somehow just did never saw that line and completely we need to do some of these investments now maybe not the bridge but everything else I would be I I think it's, it seems pretty important and then only wait on the playground equipment so we've got all that construction done right yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. I, f I feel better about everything, but um, see, and, and I'd like to see is if you know if we could get a better figure on a on the, the pole barn, what you're talking about now for the Sutton Farm, you know, we, we may be able to get off much yeah, much we better could, than we could do that tearing that whole big building down. <laughs> you know. To me, that's an investment. Yeah. That's really that would be worth. Yeah. A, using this money and and if we had to go into our fund balance for the general fund it would be worth it because it, it takes care it, of all the equipment for everybody it, you know, it's, all of our guys. it's an investment that yeah. protects us in the long run right okay no i was just thinking uh i'll send you a link because if i'm not mistaken it's called morton prefab buildings yeah um, there's a ton of them right. yeah morton is good no, that's good. A, that's one that I mean, we've worked with them in the past. That was pretty inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're all. Yeah. Well, th that's really it. It's a pretty inexpensive Benson, way to put yeah, it. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 The, the way you in, in have a more better structure up front. Will the library, the library roof still have to be a flat roof? No. No. It's going to have a pitch. Yeah. So this roof wood placement would probably solve a lot of problems oh, for yeah. a long time to oh, come. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we definitely need to do that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Electric funds next, Johnny. I just didn't even see those. <laughs> a little. Karen, I don't have to oh, and there was there was a typo with the traffic signal. Um, Johnny caught it this morning, and the packet was updated. But if you didn't print it out um, after about three o'clock, then 
there was a zero that was omitted. Where's this? Zero. What, I'm sorry, what page are you on? Um, under the electric fund traffic signal, East Eden and Main Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I had 12,000. It it's 120. 120. It was a typo. Oh, that's a, yeah. And it was updated, but it was after like 3 o'clock. So, so does that mean eight. that bottom line is now 200 and? 250. Okay. All right. Yeah. Should we take a we, we take a little break? Yeah, take a little break. Sorry, Johnny. Jeff and Jerry just <laughs> left that, for a second. That makes sense. I don't mind having some time to study this anymore. Anyway. Never mind, I'm sorry, I just saw it right here. Does Tony need to stay? No. Hmm? Do, you, do you want to excuse Tony if. Yeah, Tony. Do you want to go, Tony? We're done yeah. with you. Sorry, yeah. we should have told you that a lot. Sorry time. about that. You Thanks probably could have left when you were done, but thank you for, for your time. I was looking at this again. This is all gonna wow, well, what if we can't? Yeah, that's why I, I, and did, I just I just so didn't even see I that up there. I, I think what we might want her to do is make those a little bit more. Well yeah. I'll ask I'm sure that, that we're gonna I can change it. Yeah. I mean that's I thought that might be a good thing just because no. you know what? It was actually weird that you know what? Let me do it right now because he said it for approval this afternoon and I told him okay. anyway. So it's a sorry. I mean I don't we think I just gotta find a way to make it more obvious. Yeah. I got that damn muffin monster on there. We, we need to just buy that thing and just yeah. make things off of our list. Off the sewer? Yeah. It just. No, the sewer fund is losing money. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's been for three years. We're probably going to need a rating. Uh, yeah, I mean, by God, look at that. That one doesn't that have much. No, we're paying. We need rate increases. Oh, yeah, that was in the Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, wait on, I'd wait on electric. <coughs> There's some uncertainty there. But water and sewer. Okay. Oh, we're done. Thank you. And then uh, the last page is what we're planning on. Okay. Oh, good. There's Woodrow. You're in heaven. Thanks. I know. Okay, thanks. Oh, you just, yeah, and you good. just wrote this up. Is that it, Jason? You just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty quick. Yeah. Okay, you guys ready? Is, is Woodrow the one off of Zing Avenue? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that one's the one. That's that one's been. Uh, <laughs> okay, Johnny, your first uh, budget right. presentation. Yeah. Do you do you like Johnny or John? John. John? Johnny. Johnny. Okay. Okay. Uh, talking about the streetscape, uh, I know we can defer the project over three years, but I have not checked out with the way the lights change. In three years, the ones that we need, they may be changed. So we may no may, longer be available. Right. We may need to look at purchasing all the lights prior to. I thought we had. We, we've not got all the lights. There's no. only six. No, we didn't get all the lights. See, I thought that that's what we did. I thought for that very reason, yeah, I, I thought, thought, we did too, I thought I when we did the project that we bought them all. There's only six out there. Yeah, it was only okay. six. Yeah. So I, I agree with him about that. Yeah, I agree. Go ahead. 
Yeah. 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 Go ahead and do yeah, that. Yeah, I agree with you about that. Yeah, just do it. It's 100000 and that's this fund is healthy and enough. Uh, the pole replacements, I believe that is for the streetlight poles or poles that are rotten, and that's just the yeah. annual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. uh, the traffic signal, uh, I don't know much about it. I've just. I mean, does anybody know the difference between the yes. basic and upgrade? Yeah, the basic is they're suspended on cables. The upper, the more expensive option is a boom arm. I want to go to those. To I want to go to the boom arms. Mm -hmm. I, I would grand. love. It's a yeah. lot of money. I know, but you, maybe downtown. I want those downtown so oh, bad. This, this is out of. I know it's out of East Enon. I know. We, we can't use them on on 68 in in uh, Corey where where you know the. the as you pull pull off to try to turn into Corey, you lose the light, or you or you stay where you are mm -hmm. <laughs> and wait for the traffic. But you know you just can't you, you can't see that light. Yeah. How often do those have to be replaced? This is out on out by the high school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, I mean that one's been there for yeah. 35 or 40 years. I we're calling we're we're talking about upgrading a. Um, Upgrading these as gateways, mm -hmm. I I I would like to consider it. Um, it's I I I am getting so tired of seeing wires hanging everywhere. I want to go to as much underground as, as we can. It's a lot harder and to and fix. <laughs> underground's harder to fix. Right? I know, I know. Well, what about this? Do you know about like whether the boom? I mean, that's not really putting it underground. It's just putting it within that, the. Are those? Up in the yeah, they're they're not any harder to fix, are they? No, the ones those, in the booms? those particular ones would have a raceway to where you could pull cables in and out. Right. Okay. Um, I, I mean, it's a, it's it's essentially an aesthetic thing, and I. Um, and this covers the whole intersection, so both sides, or how does this? It would probably only cover. It would probably go two thirds across the road at least. Right. So mm -hmm. you can get traffic lights out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there'd be one pole and one arm. No, I bet there'd be two. Be That's wall, probably two why it's twice as expensive, is yeah, because there's I'm actually. I guess there's two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One pole, two arms, right? That's what. Yeah. Is there any kind of safety improvement with the pole versus the? Never heard anyone no. talk about it. There've been a few kind of serious accidents right at the intersection in the last few years. So just wondered. If and I'm assuming that these are the um, energy. There's yeah, probably LED LEDs, LEDs, LEDs and LEDs. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could we maybe get a little bit more information on those? Sure. You know, I think it's helped. Uh, Judy, that you know, Antioch used to have a light lighting up the sign there, and I noticed that that light's been out. <laughs> but you can see the the stoplight better with the light being out. So, hmm. so it looks like you don't need a lot this year, huh? Well, I, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, the Antioch West feed is that's already done. That was actually a change. Oh, okay. So that, that's actually done. And the work down at YSI has been done to take that, take them their new line? Yes. Okay. Underneath the roof mm -hmm. on 68. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Uh, the new digger truck is... I, I, I have one quick... Okay. Uh, you, you know, we had that issue about the light there on um, Keith Hamilton Way, putting the... Uh, Keith Hamilton Way, yeah. Okay. We're going to put in a couple of street lights. Okay, is, is that in here? Is that, it's not big this? enough. Uh, it's not big enough? Okay, I just want to special. make sure it doesn't drop through the cracks. Yeah, your predecessor and I worked that out. We need to talk about it. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, the new digger truck is scheduled to be replaced next year. It'll be 20 years old next year. Uh, to go back to uh, the Sutton Farm, I come from the contractor area. We didn't have nothing inside. The equipment only lasted 10 years. I was driving a 1998 bucket truck where the tools were falling out as far as we could do it. Getting them inside, 
is a big change. Uh, the other thing is, is if you ever go by full of sand and gravel, mm -hmm. they yes. put some RV storage buildings up all the time to have the dual cross doors, and that's what would be a great improvement out there. Mm -hmm. Right. And they are they are a reasonable cost. Mm -hmm. so well, yeah, then you I think we we just need to do this, sure. and it yeah. needs to happen. Right. And I'm, I think you know you right. two working together, let's make it yeah. make it work. Right. That that digger truck we can we got another year on that, right? We have another year. That's correct. That's right. Uh, but we needed to get it on there for right. the next year so right. we can get bids right coming for that. Uh, the new pickup truck is between both departments. Yeah. Uh, before I got here, well, when I was doing the street lighting, they had an older pickup truck and actually gave up the ghost. Uh, they sold it. Now we're trying to work out of a Crown Vic. And that don't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> we can put all that stuff in the back. Uh, like today, they loaded, they loaded up their car. They loaded up the truck for Transformers. We're trying to put water valves in the back of a car, and that doesn't work very well. Have, have you ever looked at the um, electric system task force drawing the or um, report from about seven years ago? Could you pull that out for him sometime? Sure. And there were there were a list of a few projects that were recommended. You know, that, that the whole point of that was: do we need to build a three and a half million dollar substation? And we decided no, we don't need a three and a half million dollar substation. Um, but there are things. I mean, I know that there's a third leg. And could you maybe, I mean, not necessarily with this budget or even by next week, but is that something you could put together? Because that comes up a lot. People ask, are those projects ever going to be taken care of? And address whether they we even really need to deal with them. And, and then there was some, maybe another transformer. There was something else that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. yeah, take a look at it. Mm -hmm. The water uh, replacement lines. I'm going to have to kind of help defer and go to Kent with a lot of these because the fair acres is, I believe, the one you guys were just talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. and other than cleaning up and fixing it, it actually is working right now. Yeah, it's and then that was put off to 2017. Correct. Same with uh, the. Um, oh, okay. That one. Yeah. Livermore and South College is 2015. Is that what we have the money for? Is that what we have the 400 and? No, that no? is for. That's the OPWC. That's the OPWC, correct. I know, but which, what? And the, yeah. Projects. I think that's the loop completion. Correct. Okay, and that probably needs to be, well, I don't know if we'll get it done this year or not. The money becomes available. It comes available. Ju in July, July 1. 1. And it's gotta be spent within the year. But isn't that? But that is Livermore from South College to Davis. That's part of that, isn't it? That's, That's part, part of the loop of the completion. Loop yeah. completion. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so we were going to do the engineering for that, right? Right. Yes, that's what I asked you for yeah. Yeah. the okay on the other night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. What's the King Street water line? That is a short water line. Uh, that needed to be completed. Okay. Uh, completes a loop. Mm. Correct. Yeah, out to the west, what is it, west gate from from Kingsfield out to west gate. There's a gap in the line. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, never mind. See, the bottleneck is in 15. And you guys are going to need an, another dump truck also, the, right? The dump truck is, uh, is broke. Yeah, and right. From what I've been told, <laughs> you don't want to go near it. Right. Uh, so what we're having to do now is we're having to disassemble Jason's truck and use it to be able to do the water breaks as they have. Right. So now that that has a, a, a steel bed in it. Correct. And um, now we say we say used here. 
most people when they get rid of their dump trucks, they get rid of them either they're the wore out. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't seen a whole lot of right. nice used dump yeah. You know. Right. Either that or they're trying to replace the bed and you know the, the, the cab may be good. So would it behoove us to should we be looking at a new a new dump? I would say yes. Uh, I'm going by what Kelly had down there. And, and, get, and, sp and, sp and spread the cost again. The cost again. <laughs> yeah, because you know I, you know, we, we know what our used dump right. truck looks like, right. and I haven't. Been All, although yeah. I mean, I'm guessing that there are communities that either replace them more frequently than we do, or there may be. I mean, I would certainly not be expecting us to buy a dump truck that looked like the one we're getting rid of. I mean, I would. Even if it's used, I would expect that it would be a but pretty you, nice. I don't know if people lease them and turn them in as they do with automobiles, yeah, or or you do have people going bankrupt. I suppose. I just see an awful lot of equipment sitting around that looks awfully nice, and I, you know, I just it, although the time it takes to find it might be. Yeah. I think forty-five thousand. In my honest opinion, you'll find something like we got sitting out there. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's my I fear. Is well, there's, it's, I don't yeah. know how much dump trucks cost, so yeah. I'll trust you on that. <laughs> they're, they're, they're expensive. Okay, well, yeah. if you can price set out okay. the leasing, it, maybe that's the best way to go. Yeah. That would be good to know. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All the hot fire hydrants, uh, twelve thousand for this year, and then we're having them fail. I know of two that are out of service right now. We need oh, to get okay. them ordered so we can get them replaced. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we need to start replacing them yearly. Mm -hmm. So basically so those are $2,000 a piece. Is yes. that what they run? Yes. Can, can I ask you a question? We're, we're looking at one forty thousand pickup. But could, now, now pickups are a little bit easier. Could we get by with two? Use pickups? No, no, no. Uh, or, they split the money. Oh, okay, okay. And, and forty thousand is just okay. That's what number because okay. we're gonna okay. go for the state bid. Now. Okay, gotcha. And, and it could come. So, so we really, we really only need one. Correct. Okay, we, we just split. Yeah. The okay, <laughs> that's that's right. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Well, actually, oh, before sorry. you said, um, Johnny, could you speak to what our consideration of a fund transfer? Uh, you know, with the electric fund and just what thoughts? I could yeah. if I could sit down with Mr. Bristol for about an hour and, okay. Okay. and get caught up to date. I don't want to speak when I don't yeah. know all the facts. Right. So I'd like to sit down and talk to Mr. Bristol and, right. Melissa so, yeah. and get up to date before I speak. And, okay. and that's why it would be important to look at these bigger projects like right. I just mentioned you know what what do we have coming down the pike for the for the that might impact the electric fund that we would all want to take that balance down right. to low. Right. And, and, and the other thing is with the information that I've got today or I got on uh, Monday maybe it was Friday when you came out in fact I looked at it today because I got to write it just leaving but it does look like the electric rates will be going up from 15 to 18 each year was so I got to get more into that. And that does that have to do with the contracts? Is That's that what you're? Yeah, system. yeah no, that that doesn't affect us directly. I mean, it affects our customers' costs, but we have a wholesale power cost adjustment right. built in. So if our costs go up, uh -huh. rates the customers go up automatically. Mm -hmm. So that, but okay. and so I'm not saying we don't need to be concerned, but it it won't adversely affect our finances. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I and I'm. It's Johnny. I'm concerned because it says the uh, fund balance is 1.9 million, and that seems low. But I don't. Yeah. Well, it may that may be. Yeah. We're yeah. I mean, at one point, I think we were at three and a half million or something. About three, about three the last time I looked. Yeah. So, Jason, I apologize. We probably, you know, are we going to just keep making Joe sit there? I mean, I we kind of have gone in circles, and I guess I could have should have gone to you after streets to do sewer. I keep forgetting about that part of your job. Does, which of you which of you wants to get out of here sooner are you going to leave it doesn't look like either of you are going to leave are you going to leave when the other one's done go ahead and finish sewer 
Yeah, yeah, the only two things that I have for uh, Sierra Collection is the uh, East Lions Limestone Sanitary Line uh, that we are proposing. Um, that is uh, a new line. Uh, we currently have clay in there now. It will be moved up to PVC, and we have some root intrusion, which that will be taken care of also with the installation of the PVC pipe. Yeah, just so you're aware, the the new hotel coming in, the sewer that is there, the diameter of it is theoretically adequate to handle the existing use plus the new hotel. But it's not in, the line is not in good condition, and as a reality, adding the hotel volume is going to create a problem. So uh, I've, had, I've had plans developed to replace the sanitary sewer. Um, I'm still talking to the county about possibly making the hotel a TIF project, mm -hmm. which might be a way to pay for the utility improvements because we've got to do storm sewer, sanitary sewer, and some water extension. Now, the water extension is pretty, well, I can say it's short, but it's probably a couple hundred feet anyway. So it will be significant. Okay. So, but if we can, if we can find a way to pay for that out of, future tax revenues, then it won't be such a bite out of our budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Thanks, Jason. Mm -hmm. Oh, the only oh, thing that I have more? else is I'm sharing the inflow and infiltration with, with Joe. Um, currently this year, um, I'm looking into slip lining all of our concrete pipe to prevent this inflow and infiltration. Uh, so that, that will come out of there. Um, but I'm not seeing a number there. No, no, no. I haven't put that number in as oh. far as mine. It, it's roughly going to cost about twenty-five grand to okay. do that, um, just because it's a bigger diameter pipe. I believe it's sixteen inches, so that that will take up a lot. Um, okay. And then the rest of it, for my part, um, was if we were going to do anything for um, like um, salt pump removal for the north side, so we're not putting an abundance. On, on Joe mm -hmm. so that that's what that number included that can okay. be spaced out for the next five years okay now when you say sump pumps what, what are you what are you referring to there it is illegal to dump fresh water into our sanitary system but what is happening is we have an abundance of, of cellars and, and, and um, basements that they are pumping all of that fresh water that they get from their sump pump directly into okay. the sanitary lateral yeah. It should go on the storm sewer. Okay. So are we storm. talking about, uh, uh, <clears throat> I saw something about a, it was a program that a community did. Uh, yeah. So that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. We're trying to eliminate that. Okay. So, that okay. Yeah. so some type of incentive. That's the CMOM project we had right. a presentation yeah. on a few months ago. But it's an incentive to the people that are doing it to entice them to disconnect their sump pumps? And it's enabling them to to cover that cost gotcha. of, of, of okay. disconnecting. Gotcha. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's that's what that's for. Okay. But that, I mean, like I said, that can be spaced out the next right. you know, right. 15 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be good. Thank you. Mr. Joe Bates, since you've got the biggest project, we'll save you for last. <laughs> My projects is come in big ones, not just a bunch of small ones. Let's start up at uh, water distribution. I know it's in the future, but uh, the painting of the water towers. Mm -hmm. um, we had those inspected, I believe it was the summer of 2011. We had the divers go in and inspect them. So yes. they, look, they looked good then, so I'm projecting it out to 2017. And if we do them together, it's gonna be a lower cost than if we do them at separate times, obviously. Mm -hmm. So just some to keep on your radar yeah okay and then also with the what Jason was just talking about the inflow and infiltration um, there was goals listed in the CMOM mm -hmm. and some of those goals were camera work flow metering monitoring um, some pump removal downspout removal and so that uh, that amount of the 150 is where where that comes from and we have to decide where to put it one year and then under sewer treatment um, under the water reclamation facility vehicle um, we currently are using a, a truck that we got from the drug task force 
Uh, we've used it for about three years now. And I can either put money into that for some repairs or look at a new vehicle. Um, if need be, I could, I could project that out to uh, possibly 15 or 16, 20, okay. if necessary. Um, the lift station improvements. Um, last year we spent, uh, I think, roughly 80000 on that improvement um, for the exterior and the, the upgrade of the electrical. You might remember this, this lift station improvement project that LJB did mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And they projected um, the cost being 410000 with a 15% contingency which took us up to 471,000. Um, I'm in line with basically not doing everything that was recommended, but I'm in line with about half of that, getting, getting that lift station improved for about half of that and spreading it out over a couple years. And that's something Laura wanted to do. She said, let's not do that as a one-year project spread it out so so that's what the hundred thousand dollars is and then we probably would have a hundred thousand in the next year last year we spent about 80 on it oh okay and then this year would be projected about a hundred thousand dollars okay i'm not sure i want to know the answer but what is a muffin monster <laughs> um, i want to this explained <laughs> several times <laughs> that i've been putting that off it's amazing how this thing keeps living i know i want to <laughs> ask what that muffin monster <laughs> on <laughs> It, it's a commie neuter. It actually uh, it chops up the larger pieces so that it flows through the pump uh, more efficiently. Otherwise, you the, the pumps will clog up. So they gave it a catchy name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very memorable. You'll see it next year, and, or hopefully you won't see it next year. Yeah. You couldn't just call it a macerator? Yeah, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but Muffin Monster is so much yeah. more <laughs> explicit. We get to this year. Yeah. It's, it's more evocative. Yeah. Out of it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Cookie Monster. Yeah, they have some good advertising on those pieces of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> and then the new pumps at the water reclamation facility. These three pumps were not part of the plan upgrade in 2010. <coughs> they date back to 1988. Um, they run some of them one or the other the RAS pump runs 24-7 uh -huh. and I recently had um, it's probably been about three or four years ago I had it the one rebuilt uh, they had to reuse the impeller um, because it no longer existed so we had to reuse an old no new um, worn out impeller mm -hmm. so um, so you're just saying replace it yeah replace three three of those pumps and if we like once again if we do them all together at once it's cheaper yeah if we spread it out over several years it becomes more time and travel for the the contractor to do it okay. joe are you saying your truck will probably last you another year but in 15 we probably should look at replacing it yeah i'm gonna have to put some money in into that uh, drug task force truck that was it was free to the village and it's been a good truck mm -hmm. but I'm gonna have to put some money into it to keep it in operation okay but you'll let us know where it is yeah I mean I think yeah, that's I think that's that point um, yeah because we, there's no to, to put any more money into it um it's still a decent truck it, what it, year is it I got to find out how much I need yeah, to that's put what it I'm saying okay right okay because yeah, it may be it's a yeah. 2001 yeah and it has about uh, 95,000 miles on it okay well, okay, I didn't really, okay. So, I've had the easy one, okay. the, the right. least amount. Well, then, <laughs> thank you. Is there anything well, going on at the water well, treatment plant? Uh, that's your decision. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we were, well, it's either uh, all uh, one or no, no, is is yeah. no yeah. nothing, is, there's oh, no other alternative. I'll take a new one if you want to give me a new one. But. <laughs> I'll do whatever you want want to decide. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I think. Um, yeah, let, let's just spend just a second with the upcoming. The one thing I was wondering, the one thing that, that Judy brought up in the um, um, agenda planning meeting today is 
because Marianne isn't here, um, hasn't been here for the past two budget meetings, do we want to consider starting um, the next meeting, having a, another budget session at 6, or should we just have any in-depth discussion about of the budget during the regular discussion? Let me just, I think it's mainly my schedule that is the problem. So let me just look what Monday, that's Monday the 3rd? Yep. Yeah. I could come six isn't a problem on that day. I mean we don't have a lot on the agenda we've got we've got that piece that water rate increase that piece of legislation we've got the budget and we've got um, council goals I don't know I don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time on that um, then we've got the community access panel report water sourcing discussion Kent is actually not quite sure how much he's going to have by this time if he hasn't heard from Springfield and then um, Brian's going to have a short presentation on um, the eGov proposal for the um, for the website. So we don't have a hugely mm. busy meeting. So you know, I think we probably could do it. It's not start a, at seven o'clock, and it's not a problem for me either way. So um, it may sometimes it might be better for staff to not what? have things go so late. I don't know. Well, maybe we can get it done from six to seven and, and, and have a shorter look, meeting. Yeah, and then let them, you know, maybe get out there earlier. That's, I mean, that way you can, you can. Yeah, why don't we, why don't we go ahead? I, yeah, I mean, it's. It looks like it shouldn't be a problem for me to come at six. And is everybody so? Well, do we want to? Do we want to just start the meeting at six o'clock? Is it is it a problem for noticing? If we no, because I, I mean, I can let them know up till. Okay, yeah, about noon tomorrow, and they're on on notice that it we're we may start at six, and then I have something to plug in there. So yeah, if okay. we could start at six and then maybe get out early, I, I think that I'd would be good. Appreciate it. And do we see the need for um, any staff members to be here besides Melissa? I don't. I don't think so. I, don't I personally think so. don't. I think we're okay. Yeah, we've heard I think if she if she gets a chance to. If this is taped to, to review the tapes, you yeah, just what make whatever changes. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I know that the budget. This is the thing that typically Marianne going to be. Marianne, he, be he will be. Yeah. She will be here. Yeah. yeah. The thing that typically happens is because the budget is done on those, the regular forms, mm -hmm. so it looks totally different. Yes. So, can you bring us updated actual budget sheets? Yes. Thank the you. The ones that will be passed for ordinance. Go ahead and update. Yes. In that format, that's what you're referring to? Well, what I would like to have are these updated, you know, just the, the worksheets updated with anything that we've talked about today, and then in addition to the ordinance language, in addition to what, because I always the find state it. State form. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I always find it that isn't quite as explicit as and this then is. Just to back it up. Right. And then we have this, especially for Marianne, yeah. um, who hasn't had the. Um, opportunity to be at these meetings. For the actual budgets, the special revenue, the enterprise, and the general fund, though, there weren't any changes. It was all regarding capital. Yeah, I don't think that there were. I believe. I, I didn't make, I didn't mark anything up. No. I mean, I was, I, we weren't really making, we didn't make any yeah, I mean, I think that we'll. I think that we'll discuss them. I mean, I think yeah. we didn't talk about the green space fund. I think that those are a few of the details that we will talk about. Okay. But we did make um, changes. You know, s mostly spreading out the, some of the capital projects and then taking out a couple of them too. Okay. And I mean, maybe what we want to do with those bridges is put them in the future or something, just so we don't lose the idea of them. <coughs> um, but I also think that there are projects like that that we can turn over to the community and say hey you know we've got these projects if this because we used to, we have a, we have a pretty good track record of community fundraising for a lot of projects mm -hmm. so um, the train station well that's um, why I think if the skate park the first if, time so if the arts people mm -hmm. can look at this stuff and start thinking about that mm -hmm. thinking about creative ways to fund some of these things it yep. will take some pressure off of our budget right that would be great so, Karen, is this then review of budget as a whole from six to seven? I, I, or just general fund where you've got. I'm, I'm thinking of we just start the meeting at start six o'clock. Start the meeting. Start okay. the meeting okay. at six o'clock, and, and then. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we'll get to the legislation when we get okay. to it. Okay. 
I wanted to mention something I told Karen about. Um, I walk with a cane and my condition is worsening and it's getting worse literally day by day. And so I'm going to have back surgery. I haven't scheduled it yet, uh, but I really can't defer it. I mean, ideally yeah. I'd wait until the replacement was here, but uh, I'm afraid by that time I won't be able to walk at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, the surgeon I'm dealing with says that he's certain he can arrest the problem and maybe even make it a little better. Uh, so sometime in March, uh, I'm going to be gone. It's going to involve three or four days in the hospital and some limitations on coming back to work, which I'll try to deal with as constructively as I can. But uh, just so you're aware, I'm going to. Well, I'll be watching you close, David. Do a good job on you and you can do me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm not liking all these hospital stays. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you guys. Thank you.